The next few days will be pivotal for Congress, from the primetime January 6th hearing to work on the first assault weapons ban in nearly 20 years. Joining me now to discuss it all, Congressman David Cicilline, former House impeachment manager in Donald Trump's second impeachment trial. He's also the sponsor of the bill to ban assault weapons. Congressman Cicilline, welcome back to The Sunday Show. So. I want to ask you Thanks. a question about something that former Senator Doug Jones said in the previous segment where he said he asked the question, you know, I wonder why Congress hasn't um, drafted a resolution um, to bar Trump from holding office again. So I put that question to you. Is such a resolution possible or does one even exist? Yes, actually, I uh, began drafting one last December. Uh, I have already circulated with my colleagues that essentially finds, based on the uh, work of the January 6th Commission, that Donald Trump engaged in an insurrection and therefore barred by the 14th Amendment from ever holding office again. The truth is we're awaiting the completion of the January 6th Committee before we introduce it. And the reality is we keep adding whereas clauses because every <laughs> week, because of the excellent work of this committee, we have more evidence of the former president's direct involvement in this. And, and one more question on this real quickly. So you draft this resolution. All it takes is a simple majority for it to pass? Yes, that's right, in both House and the Senate. Both House, House and the Senate. Ah, uh, the Senate. All right. I'm not even going to go down that road. So let's keep talking about the January 6th, he the, the hearings, the primetime hearing coming up on Thursday. What have you learned so far that you didn't know being an impeachment manager in Trump's second impeachment trial? Well, I think we've learned a lot about the planning uh, at the highest levels of the Trump administration, including the former president. This was a very sophisticated uh, and well-developed plan to keep Donald Trump in office, even though he had lost the election. And we now know without any doubt that Donald Trump knew he lost it. Everyone around him told him he had lost the election. He refused to accept the decision of the American people and developed a very sophisticated, very elaborate plan to stay in office despite the decision of the American people. And we know a lot about the planning now and the execution. And we're going to learn this week about his failure to intervene, even though he knew what was happening at the Capitol. So then what are you hoping to hear during Thursday's hearing? Well, this was a part that I particularly focused on in the impeachment hearing, and that is what uh, Donald Trump did uh, when the violence began to break out at the Capitol that he had incited. And the answer is he did absolutely nothing. And he endangered his vice president, he endangered members of Congress, he endangered the Capitol Police. And despite the fact that he, you know, members of his family and his close uh, members of his administration were begging him to intervene, he simply refused. And even though they were yelling, hang Mike Pence, he, uh, you know, was gleeful about that. So I think this is going to be an example of his responsibility as president of the United States to, to protect our democracy. He was derelict in that responsibility. He allowed the violence to continue. And I think that's what the January 6th committee is going to show this week. Let's talk about the potential assault weapons ban. You're the lead House sponsor on a bill banning assault weapons. The last ban expired in 2004. After so many mass shootings, do you think this time is really different? Can an assault weapons ban get passed? Absolutely. Uh, we have 213 uh, co-sponsors of the bill, the highest number we've ever had. I'm continuing to work uh, with the remaining members of our caucus and many Republicans to try to get additional votes. These are weapons of war. Researchers estimate that if the assault weapons ban were in effect, they would be 70 percent less uh, deaths by mass shootings. So this would have been a significant impact over the last many years. Uh, and this is an opportunity to put that ban back into effect. The president has called for it. These are weapons of war that are designed to kill as many people as quickly as possible. Two thirds of Americans think they don't belong in the neighborhoods of our communities. And so the House is going to take that bill up this week. Uh, and I expect we'll pass it out and send it to the House floor. Right. It'll pass. It'll pass out of the committee. It'll pass out of the House of Representatives, and then it'll go to the Senate, where it will most likely die. How, what's it going to take to get um, folks in the Senate to do what the House is going to do and what a majority of the American people want done? Well, I mean, the American people have to continue to make certain that they are demanding that Congress do everything it can to keep them safe from gun violence in this country. We have a gun violence epidemic. 
the assault we weapons ban when it was last in effect, it worked. There was a significant reduction in mass shootings and a significant reduction in deaths. And we have to hold people accountable who don't do everything they can to keep America safe from gun violence. So we're gonna pass it out of the House, and then I think the American people are gonna demand the Senate take action. And if they don't, there's an election in November and they're gonna hold people accountable. There's one party that's fighting for common sense gun safety legislation, and there's one party that's standing in the way on behalf of the gun lobby, and the American people know the difference. Here's something I can't understand, Congressman. Earlier this week, the House passed your bill to create an active shooter alert system. Makes a lot of sense, but 168 Republicans voted against it. I don't understand. What's wrong? It, 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 a party that claims to be so pro-life isn't willing to give people a tool to actually protect their lives. Yeah, I mean, it's remember this. This was the number one priority of the Fraternal Order of Police, the National Service Association, all of law enforcement was saying, we need this to alert the community when there's an active shooting incident happening. Forget about, this is a public safety bill. And yet we, the majority of Republicans refused a system that would allow their constituents to be notified if God forbid there was a shooting at their children's school or in their local grocery store. This is, there were only 40 Republicans that voted for it. All the others did not. There's no explanation for that. This was a bill that will make certain that you get accurate and immediate information that if there's an active shooting incident happening in your community, there's no excuse for it. And you know what? Um, we have to go. But before we go, I want to play um, Speaker Nancy Pelosi's response to um, Republican critics of the, the shooter alert system. How can these Republicans vote no to people knowing that there's an, uh, uh, an assault in their school or their community centers or wherever? These people think their political survival is more important than the survival of our children. I'm going to let Nancy Speaker Pelosi Couldn't say it any better than that.